very, very good morning to you on Fellowship Day 297. Yeah, another one of those days that I typed the numbers 297 as I was uh, gawking wide-eyed at my calendar and wondering how how did it come to pass that I went from day 285 a few weeks ago and looked up two and a half weeks later to come back to you on day 297. We are, uh, I'm bringing my head up <laughs> for air at the moment because we are just coming to the end of master's project season. So actually quite excited to have, uh, in this case, four master's theses from four, four of our students who uh, joined the research team over this past academic year. So it's the coming together of all of their work. It's been uh, a busy, productive, insightful, challenging, pressing <laughs> whirlwind of a research period. So this week is is going to be com intense in a complimentary sense, uh, intense in that I will be shutting the doors, putting the blinkers on and trying to put most of my attention into providing helpful and useful reviews to the students who will be dearly missed and departing is very soon. This is the last hurdle to get over and um, sneaking in some selfish parallels here. It's, it's come at a good time because I'm in the thick of getting my You Are Not A Fraud book reviews back from those who have asked to be beta readers uh, and at the same time waiting on feedback from my formal editor. But as that feedback comes in, I can feel how painful it is. Some of it is so obvious that I think, why the hell did I miss that before submitting what I've called a draft? And I cringe at some other parts where I think, oh, they're right, they're right. <laughs> I do write with a little bit overly flowerly language or I uh, labour an anecdote a little bit too much for too long. There's other things where I need more clarity on the comments made, but as challenging, as uncomfortable as all the feedback is, I know all the while that it's done kindly. I know that it's from the heart. I know that it's all done to benefit what will be the final book product. And we've spoke about criticism on other days, but I mentioned that here at the top while I'm talking about our research projects because I'll, I'm feeling that discomfort of receiving feedback. So I'm all the while mindful of trying to be compassionate open and uh, very reassuring when I provide my own feedback to each of these four master students who have been with us for the past six months or so. That's why we're busy at the moment. That's what's happening. That's what's front of mind. But with that, you know, having four master students for an early career academic like myself, that makes up quite a substantial percentage of your team in our case it was approximately 50 percent of the team with us for half the year and then all of a sudden they're gone i uh, an even longer story short we're also looking at uh, a, a lot of turnover in our more senior personnel as well we've got uh, arrangements being made for new phd students to come in some will be preparing to leave we've had postdoc come and go make a great contribution to the team and has moved on to a more senior fellowship role. All of it together at all levels of the team contributes to what can feel like in the leadership position as an eye-watering and nosebleed-worthy amount of turnover, specifically in personnel. And to say that it's in no way exhausting would be a barefaced lie. It is very energy intensive to think about these things because in the background to a lot of personnel changes is firstly the review of theses like those that I've mentioned to make sure that all the valuable publishable information is captured, that all of the valuable 
handover where the information is captured so that a, a project that is getting off the ground can be continued and taken on by someone else who comes into the team and, and take a project over the line. So there's capturing the information. There's the bureaucracy of getting funding released to hire in new staff where staff have left. And of course, let's say at the what is arguably the the work horse level the the main fuel that drives any research team the phd researchers there's thinking about new ways of funding new members of the team to come in to take over from where other team members have left after three and a bit years or four years even there's a lot of work there's a lot of let's say a lot of frantic paddling beneath the surface for the graceful swan on top did I just compare myself to a swan? God, I hope I didn't. Someone will catch that. Someone will hold me accountable. And one of my friends who really loves to stick it to me when I make a mistake in this unscripted podcast will no doubt snip out the audio and play it back to me. I look forward to that happening. I look forward to that happening. Anyway, moving on, swiftly on, as gracefully as a swan, or perhaps one that's just been squashed in some way he says holding himself back from a rather graphic analogy uh, look at me as i hand a virtual shovel to myself and keep on digging a hole anyway once again here we go let me try and get back on track i am um, thinking a lot about just how uh, intense the feeling is of trying to maintain a team culture when the team at various times of the year can turn over so rapidly and not as if without warning, this is where today's prompt comes in. And the thing that I'm considering, the thing that I hope you and your path into a growing leadership position will consider, how is it that you can maintain the ethos, the culture, the way things tend to be done in your team when the team itself seems to change faces so often? How is it that you can keep the same paint on the canvas when the canvas itself is alive and ever-changing? That's not to say, and I caught myself as I was saying it, that's not to say that your, your culture, your way of doing things is static. That is in itself dynamic. But that is all the while a more gradual change, relatively speaking, than the, the people themselves that change at a more rapid rate, relatively speaking. So how is it that you can maintain that more slowly moving culture of your team and how you like to run things and how you best support people whilst all the while the people that are being supported by that culture are changing all the time? A couple of ways that I'm thinking about doing it, that we are doing it is, well, first and foremost, since around 2018, so for the better part of four years now, we've had a group welcome pack that I wrote all those years ago and have been refining ever since. And that contains all the what to do if Mark's not here sort of stuff or you know what is the base level map that you need to work your way around this group territory? Uh, where's all the backup information? Where do we tend to keep literature references that everyone will want to see where are where's the access to theses and safety information and expectations for group meetings and uh, shared calendars project platforms all of that sort of stuff i've put into a welcome pack to cover something more general which relates to this issue of personnel and high turnover which is how can you get the same message across without exhausting yourself through repetition? How is it that you can get the message across so that everyone sees it? Shall I allow me a analogy from my religious childhood? How can you make sure that everyone is singing from the same hymn sheet without you having to sing the song every time? And a welcome pack is fantastic for that because you put it down once albeit with the refinements over time, and you never have to put it down again. You have to, of course, trust that people will read that. There's elements of a welcome pack where you want to have it 
talk about it in conversation or reinforce it at times because culture doesn't grow without reinforcement. But it is, as a base document, a really valuable thing to optimize the things that you're repeating rather than assuming that you have to start from scratch and repeat all of these things for every new person that jo joins your team or needs a reminder of something. Another way to do that, that I'm now reflecting on more positively now than perhaps I did when I was feeling the discomfort of being part of group meetings uh, as I was coming through the early stages of my research career. But those those that group meeting aspect is the other part on top of a welcome pack. I've not been great at times given turnover of maintaining a regular group meeting schedule, but I now see that it's absolutely critical, perhaps arguably more so coming out of things like the global pandemic where we've got a lot more used to working virtually and think, and trying to think about how to blend group meeting schedules where some of it's virtual and some of it's in, in real life, if you like, has been, a, I've found a tough thing to maintain. So right now, another thing I'm trying to do to maintain our culture, to grow our culture, evolve it, to reinforce what everyone else can uh, can bring individually to nurture the team is to make our meeting schedule more predictable, more regular, more set in the calendar. Now, it's bringing together people in a regular way can hold each other accountable not to me, but to one another in a way that's really, really difficult to do by email or by text or even by the more dynamic chats that we have in our uh, project management platform. So together, things like a welcome pack, things like a regular group meeting schedule can help offset the exhaustion that comes about from having to, to chaotically paddle beneath the surface of maintaining a team and showing strength and leadership and resolve when so many things are changing so rapidly at the personnel level. So for you and for your team, how can you steady an ever rocking boat? How is it that you can maintain the ethos that you want to set when inevitably, eventually, you'll find that the faces in front of you change more rapidly? then you can blink. I hope you're having a great day. We're coming up for 300 days in the fellowship. Not quite 300 episodes of the podcast, but regularly enough that I'm always increasingly grateful to have you here and to keep me going on this. As I close, a reminder once again that if you've got any comments or questions for me, uh, reach out on the podcast web pages at uh, dr-mark-read.com forward slash podcast. You can fill in a form there, upload a audio recording for me. I'll play it as I hear it out on a Q&A episode of the podcast and give you my fresh unscripted answer from the head and from the heart straight back to you. For now, until then, and until next time, have a great day. I'll see you again soon for another episode of the Read Indeed podcast. Take care. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to dr-mark-read.com. That's dr dash mark with a c dash r e i d dot com thanks again for listening